because of Jesus, I am a accepted, adopted, approved, and alive. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am B, beloved, blessed, born again, and a bond servant of Jesus. I am C, chosen of God, a child of God, citizen of heaven, and crucified with Christ. I am D, delivered from darkness, dead to sin, and a disciple of Jesus. We I am elect. Glory to the Lord. Why don't we all stand to our feet and come on, let's, let's usher in the presence of God this morning that he would just have his way upon us. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning we have gathered here in your presence this morning through prayer. Now we want to come and worship you through praise and worship god your word teaches us that you inhabit the praises of your people in other words where praise is being offered you come and you meet lord god us at that place so right now i believe god as we worship you in praise and worship that your holy presence is just going to come upon us in jesus name amen <laughs> Oh, shout it out and glorious. Oh, make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. You are glorious. Oh, you are glorious. My God, you reign. Oh, my God, you reign forever and ever. And how great your name is. Yeah. Your love remains forever and ever. And you stay the same. Oh, shout it out. Oh, shout it out, shout it out, if you know he's good. Sing it out, sing it out, for the Lord is good. Oh, shout it out, out. you are glorious, yeah, glorious. Oh, shout it out in glorious. Make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. You are glorious. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are so, so glorious. Oh, sing, my God, you reign. Oh, my God, you Forever and ever, and how great your name is. Yeah. But you have remained forever and ever, and you stay the same. Oh, shout it out! Oh, shout it out! Shout it out! If you know He's good, sing it out! Sing it out! For the Lord is good. Oh, shout it out, you are glorious, and glorious, oh, glorious. Oh, shout it out, and glorious. Make it loud, and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. Something has to break 
tear down every lie, set the wrong thing right. Oh, when you have your way, oh, something has to bring, something has to bring. Feel it in this room, Holy Spirit, Lord. When you have your way, something has to bring. Tear down every lie and set the wrong king right. When you have your way, something has to bring. Through it, we believe that you can. 
This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how.
hearts are healed, we want you. We want you. Come and consume. Oh, come and consume, God. Oh, we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are healed, we want you. Oh, we want you. Say, come and consume, God. Come and consume, God. Oh, we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are healed. Oh, we want you. Oh, come and consume, God. Come and consume, God. We want you. Yeah. We want you. Oh, we love you, Lord. Cause we love you. Oh, we'll never stop. We can't live without you. But Jesus, we love you. We can't get enough. Oh, for you, Jesus. Oh, some oldies, amen, just fill it on my heart, so forgive the, the sound team if there's, the words aren't up there, amen, it just, it wasn't planned, so I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross, I'll never To see my sin upon that cross. Come on, we know sin. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely and all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. See it again, because here I am to and here I am to bow down. Here I am to see that you're my God. 
You're all together lovely and all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Cause I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Cause I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the word of God, it teaches us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And when we come to a gathering like this, of course, we establish in prayer first and then worship and praise. And we believe that that draws the spirit of God in the house. You're here. Maybe you have come this morning and there's some heaviness in your life. Maybe you've been assaulted by the enemy through warfare. Maybe you're going through all sorts of battles in your life this day. I believe the Lord is going to touch you this morning. Amen. We want to pray for the sick, those that are uh, battling with illnesses. Brother Scott, uh, we, he got released yesterday from the hospital. That's a good sign. But he's been in there. Amen. I believe he was here last Sunday and then he got back in there. Brother Donald got released. He's here this morning. Praise the Lord. And, uh, we're just trusting God. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning. And you need a healing touch. If you're here right now and you're, you're dealing with some sort of sickness in your body, maybe going through some sort of assault in your, in your mind, and no doubt, folks, the enemy loves to strike us in any way he can. I want you to come out of your seat and stand here. I want to believe God for you. Amen. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's some, some sort of illness in, uh, in your body physically. I want to believe God through a general prayer. I'm not going to be able to lay oil on everybody, and, but I want to believe God. That's your faith. See what you're doing right now. In an event, you don't know what's going on right now. They're stepping out in faith. That's what they're doing. They're coming, and I'm going to minister on that subject right now. But they're stepping out in faith right now. Maybe right now you're dealing with any type of sickness right now. I, I believe by you stepping out. See this? There's a whole lot of you here. There's close to 25 of you down here already. And, you know, folks, that, that I felt that in my heart this morning, that many of you just need a touch. So lift up your hands, your arms before God. Heavenly Father, they gather here like a funnel, like a funnel that's ready to receive from you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, that your word declares to us that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, you took those, those, those stripes upon your body for our, our heal, healing, for healing in our body. So I pray from the very top of the top of the head, whether it's a mind battle, all the way down to the bottom of their feet, touch every area. There are some that need right now a healing right now in their lungs. There are some that need a healing in their heart. There are some that are needing right now a healing through sugar diabetes. If you're here and you have, you have sugar diabetes, you should have been here. God wants to touch you. Those that are Lord God right now with diabetes, right now, God, I pray. I pray against kidney, kidney disease right now, God. I pray against liver, liver disease, God. I, I come against that. I come against blood, blood disease, God. Someone right here needs needs to get their count up, their, their, their blood level back to a certain count. I want to believe God for you right now. I pray against, Lord God, the assault of anxiety, Lord God. I, I come against that torment.
tormenting lie of the enemy that comes and brings a fear in our life that gets us, Lord God, to Father God, to believe other things. When you're going through anxiety, you start believing different things that your body is going to close down. But let me tell you something, friends. You need to step out and say, no, I've been healed by the blood of Jesus. We've been healed by the blood. I pray for every, every Lord God, every assault upon the minds and the hearts of your people. I come against the past. Some of you keep dealing with your past. You need to let it go, let it go, let it go and start focusing on the future. That God is in control of everything that happens from this moment on. I lift this up before you and I commit this prayer along with every one of these warriors to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, before you be seated, why don't you take time to welcome some folks? Come on, reach out. You see somebody new, go welcome them, amen. Introduce yourself to them. Come on, reach out and shake some hands this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. We want to welcome every one of you this morning. Praise God. I definitely am blessed. I got to meet some new folks this morning, and I just, I always get blessed. Not that I get tired of you, you old folks, but uh, praise the Lord. I, I get blessed anytime we see some newcomers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let me remind uh, some some of you, some of, some of these uh announcements that I have to make here uh, concerning this week. Tomorrow night, once a month, as you well know, we meet, the men of God meet here for a men's discipleship meeting, and so we want to remind you, we got, we got, um, uh, we got old Abraham tomorrow, folks, amen, and so we're, we're going to be in for a good time. He said, you tell your men not to stay home, you know, I'm going to let them know. I said, you know, Abraham, he's, He's, man, he's, he's got a lot of energy, praise the Lord. So tomorrow night, Abraham will be ministering uh, the Word of God. Tuesday, we do want to remind, there's a women's prayer meeting. If you're here and you want to be a part of that, see Sister Donna. Uh, she'll give you more information on that. It's going to be held at your home, okay, your house. If you don't, and maybe you're new to the church, you want to be a part of it. It's a women's uh, a prayer meeting, and they get to share and, and, and pray for each other. So if you're interested in that, Sister Donna, stand up, Sister Donna, in case somebody don't know you. Praise the Lord. So that's Sister Donna. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, has, opens up her home for, uh, for prayer meeting. Uh, praise God. Don't forget, midweek service, we always have prayer before. Uh, I, I thank you guys that are able to come and join us for prayer meeting uh, in, the mo in the weather in the morning like today. Uh, before most of you got here to church, we already had maybe about 20 of us praying. We already are believing God for the service, and we do that on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, we, we uh, begin prayer at 6.15, and so we encourage you to come and join us for prayer. If you if you're, you got time for that as far as being out of work and go and um, put on your, you know, your, your clothing and shower and Foo foo powder and all that, whatever, whatever you put on, amen. I don't, you know, praise God. So, hallelujah. So, don't forget, glory to the Lord, every Wednesday we have that. Friday, don't forget, 
uh, your Bible studies, they are in a very intense messages dealing with the prayer of Jabez. What is the next uh, message going to be dealing with? Amen. My ha your hands on me. Keep your hands on me. Amen. That's the next message that's going to be ministered to. So you want to pray that prayer along with that Bible study. Lord, put your hand on me. How many of you know that's probably our prayer every day? God, guard my mind. Place your hand on me. God, help me not to speak back with w wickedness. And Lord, let me just keep your hand on me. I know I pray that a lot. God, help me, Lord. Just place your hands on me. So that's the next Bible study lesson this Friday coming in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We do also got a note here. Praise the Lord. It says here by popular demand. Wow, that's pretty heavy. Praise the Lord. Now, you know that a couple of weeks ago, uh, the church had an outing at Huntington State Beach. Uh, they got together on a Sunday evening and uh, they had a great time. Good stuff that they worshiped the Lord. They just fellowship together. That was a couple of weeks ago. They want to do it again next Sunday. Next Sunday, those of you that are interested in, in that, back in the, in the hallway here, there is, amen, a bulletin there, or rather the bulletin board. Uh, it will be there Wednesday to give you the directions, or you didn't go last time. It will be the same place, same, same uh, place there. So praise God. So on Wednesday, it will be up there in the bulletin board. Uh, so if you're interested in going to that, praise the Lord, hallelujah, uh, make, make plans for that. That will, will be held next Sunday uh, after service, amen, and they go straight there, hallelujah. And so uh, summer's, summer's closing down, folks, pretty soon we'll be going into fall and then winter, and uh, so praise the Lord. So don't forget, we'll announce this again on Wednesday and, and of course, on Sunday uh, but this is giving you a heads up for next next week. Praise the Lord. We also want to remind you folks that uh, on the 11th of September, we are going to be having a water baptism. And it will be held here on a Sunday evening. Uh, basically, what we're going to do, we're going to be out, outdoors uh, and uh, we're going to have worship and praise and then testimony. And then, of course, the water baptism and uh, so those of you that are planning to do this, this will also include those of you that have recently, maybe you have turned your heart to God in the recent uh, months or, or you haven't been baptized yet um, or, or you're here. And uh, I always say this, maybe you were a part of another church uh, that went through the, the format of baptism, but you, you, you know, there's still behind your mind, what did I really do? What can I really explain to somebody that occurred when I got baptized? You'd be shocked. There's a lot of people that say, yeah, I went to the Church of the Frontier here, and, and uh, we, we, I got baptized. And uh, Okay, so explain it to me. Let, me. let me know. And you know what, folks? They'll look at you like, well, I got baptized. That's not an answer. You've got you to gotta know what you're doing. I believe this in my heart as a pastor. But don't do anything just to do it. Know why you're doing it. Know the reason. Know what you're doing. And we want to offer that back to you. Maybe you have, you have again, um, you, you want to be a part. I'm saying that because on, the, on September 11th in the morning, we're going to have a, a class for the water baptism. That's going to be the class that's going to be held in the new foundation class. And, um, and, and that's going to be taught. It's a 45-hour hour class. And uh, you'll be able to come and learn about that, amen, and, uh, and then be baptized that evening. We'll have service and then in the evening. And we do welcome you to do that, folks. Maybe, again, uh, you want to, to, to uh, be a part of that, and, and we welcome you to do that. At least you'll know what you're doing, amen, and what it means, amen, dying to the old. When you're, you're in that water, that represents the burial of the old man. When you come out of that water, you, 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 you represent a new life, amen. And, and burial, how many of you know, I don't know anybody that's gotten buried, buried with, with the lake sticking out of the ground or anything like that. When you get buried, what happens? You're totally buried. And I'll just leave that for you that maybe said, well, I got baptized as a baby. Well, I mean, there's, just let that sink in if you're reading between the lines. 
You need to understand, church. Amen. It's very important what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, demonstrated for us when he was placed in the water there in the Jordan River, totally underwater. Then he came up and the Spirit of the Lord hit him. And that's what I believe happens to us. When you get born again, first of all, you've got to be saved. And then you, you, you get, the, the, the Bible declares to us, repent and then be baptized. And if you come to know Christ in your heart, then as a, as a way of, of testifying to all, is you, you buried yourself through water baptism. Water baptism is not salvation, amen. I was always, as an infant, or well, not an infant, a, a young boy thought, that if you didn't get baptized, you, don't, you didn't go to heaven, you know, and so that's not true. The Bible declares to us repentance is the first way to heaven. Water baptism is a form of letting all know I've been, I've been buried from the old man and I come up anew. So there's a lot more to that. I've been, I've been teaching that, that, that water baptism for almost 40 years, amen. So uh, there's a lot of questions that can be asked. So I invite you, if you want to be a part of that, we're going to, at, at that week, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. This way we can know uh, those of you that are going to join the, the new foundation class for them to do that lesson. Can you say amen with me? Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So glory to the Lord. Let me invite uh, the uh, worship team first and along with the uh, ladies, the, uh, the women here that are, are our usherettes today. And there's a lot of different ladies that uh, come to the to the uh, front of the church here, praise God. The usherettes, I'm sorry, usherettes, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to the Lord, amen. Glory to the Lord, hallelujah. The ladies here have in their possession visitor's cards. If you're here as a visitor, maybe you'd like to know more about us. What can this church offer me? What can it offer my children? What can it offer us as a married couple, whatever? Uh, your situation may be if you're a single person. Um, these ladies, if you're here and you know, you're not on our mailing list, we have a visitor's card. You can fill that out. We'll place you on the mailing list. They also have offering envelopes for those of you that use the offering envelope. Other than that, of course, uh, the, the method that most of you are now doing is going through online through Zelle, and that's a beautiful way of, 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 of you don't have to write checks and all that. You know how it's played. Only thing is, is that we, we do remind you that you must place on that memo what this offering is going to. For instance, if you're, you're giving of your tithes, that's fine. If you're giving to missionary, place their missionary. Maybe you're giving an amount, you want to place your tithe and then uh, so much for your uh, uh, missionary. Uh, uh, some of you men that are still planning to go with us to the to the men's advancement, the men's uh, three-day gathering that we're going to be having in November. Uh, place there, if you're placing your deposit, don't forget, men, it's not too late. You can still be a part of that. Uh, your, your deposits are due already, but we have extended that because of the, some of you, I guess, you know, are, are right now not able to afford that. I don't know how. There's so many jobs that, that uh, you know, people, they're begging people to work, and, you know, and so... Uh, we want to remind you, amen, there's still time to be a part of that uh, as far as your deposits. Uh, we do want to remind you also that uh, we are, uh, there's, a, there's uh, some um, pamphlets there re regarding the marriage retreat. There's going to be, or the marriage getaway, amen, uh, that's going to, marriage getaway and a marriage retreat. You're not, you're, huh? Marriage revival, that's right, Amen. Yeah, we want to get away from that retreat, man. Retreat means what? You're going backwards. You're running. Amen. And so, uh, praise the Lord. But anyway, today, right now, if you need an offering envelope or a visitor's card, the ladies are going to make their way forward. Lift up your hand if you need one of those as the women go by. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I pray that you guys had a wonderful service last Sunday with... Uh, our guest speaker, uh, Carlos Garcia, I, I tell you, he was very impressed with, with, the, with the church here as far as the response, and uh, he called me while you know, we talked, and he told me, he said, man, I, you just don't find that, that often in a church anymore. Sometimes people just remain, they just don't move out of their seats, but your church, man, I, 
I really, really, not my church, God's church. The church there in Baldwin Park, God really challenged a lot of folks. So he told me to tell you guys that, amen. And so praise the Lord. So hallelujah. Well, this morning, praise God. Let me read a scripture on giving, amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to, uh, praise God, the book of, uh, I'll go to the book of uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, Proverbs 3. Verse 1, it reads here, My son, never forget the law of God. Let it always be in your heart, for length of day and long life and peace will be added upon you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind it around your heart. Write it down on the tablet of your heart. So that you will find great favor in God and high esteem upon man. He goes on in verse 5, chapter 3, verse 5. He goes on to say, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Never lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, it always acknowledge him first. And he will direct your path. And then it goes on in verse 9. Honor, honor the Lord with your giving, with your possessions, with your first fruits of all your increase, so that your homes will be filled with plenty, overrunning, overflowing, overflowing with the blessings of the Lord. Heavenly Father, this morning, God, we gather at this very precious time before you, and that is honoring you. That's what giving is. If you ever want to wonder, what is giving absolute saying? That's saying you honor God. Honor God for the blessings that you have. he has given you, and God blesses you. That's why you're able to give. So you always remember that if it wouldn't be for God, you probably won't have what you got. And so we honor God this morning in our giving. We we, we, we realize, amen, that some God will give here, God will give that, God will give more here and more. But the bottom line is always place God first and you're giving to him. And more and more will come upon your hearts and your lives. We lift this up before you in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give to the Lord. Whether you're giving online or, or here, hallelujah. I can do anything, oh, I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength, oh, nothing is impossible, through you blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith, oh, nothing is impossible. No, nothing is impossible. I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I feel. Because deep down, deep down, I, I know that you're here with me. Cause I know that you can do anything Through you I can do anything Oh, I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength oh, Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living my faith. Oh, nothing is impossible. Oh, nothing is impossible. Oh, sing, I believe. Yes, I believe, I believe. Oh, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. 
believe, I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, cause I believe, I believe in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go with me this morning to the book of Luke. birthday or something? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. I do want to remind you here this, uh, that we did get a shipment of the, the book of Jabez, and so you're interested in that. Uh, well, there's only four left now, so it's so far. Okay, four left. So it, it, it would go perfect. Two, only one more. Two left? One more. Two. Okay, two. Amen. So uh, yeah, that, that's going along with the series of the, of the prayer of Jabez. And man, I'm telling you folks, there's a lot of good prayer in that. And so she has two more books left. It says here four, but it's two. Amen. So somebody snuck over there right now. Amen. So it's all right. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter five. Go with me to the New Testament. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we're going to go to the portion of the story uh, where Jesus is having Bible, uh, home Bible study. Jesus is having home Bible study. He's at a house like we do where we meet on Fridays. And so Jesus is at, here at a house. And it, it goes on in verse 17. Luke 5, 17. Now it happened on a certain day, as Jesus was teaching in this house, that there were Pharisees there gathered along with teachers of the law. They were sitting there, and they had come out of every town from Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem. And the power, the Bible says, and the power of the Lord was there to touch them and heal them then behold there was a man who was brought on a stretcher this man was paralyzed and they brought him they sought to bring him and to lay him before Jesus but they could not find their way through the door because of a huge crowd so they decided to go up to the housetop of this house and they broke through and they let him down the stretcher or the bed through the ceiling before Jesus. When Jesus saw this, he was moved by their faith and he said, man, your sins are forgiven. And then they were there, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were there. They began to reason in themselves, saying, who, who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but only God alone? Then Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said unto them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven to you, or to say, rise up and walk. But I say this, that you may know that the Son of God, or the Son of Man, has power on earth to forgive sin. Then he looked and he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise and take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he rose up before them. He took up what he had been lying on. He departed 
And he left that house to go to his own house. And he was glorifying God. And all the people were amazed, all that were there. And they, they also began to glorify God also. And they were filled with, with fear, but yet they were saying, we have today seen a strange thing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning we have gathered in the presence of you, Lord Jesus. And we pray that this morning as we look at the story here of you visiting a house in a Bible study, that God, we will have that same type of testimony in homes that people gather with here in this church. That God, we want to see those strange things that happen, those strange things that consist of people being healed, people being delivered from drugs and alcohol, people being set free from demon possession, people, Lord God, realizing that this just don't happen anywhere, but it does happen in the presence of God. So we pray the blessings of the Lord upon every home that gathers on Friday nights, that God and the membership that goes with them, that the Holy Spirit will move, manifest in those homes like they did in this story where Jesus was there. Amen. Somebody say amen with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to minister today, and I have placed uh, a title here for this message called Being More Than a Spectator. Being More Than a Spectator. You know, I don't need to defy what give you the definition for a spectator. But a spectator, as you well know, is always just looking and watching. And he's never involved, but he's a spectator. You know, somebody comes to check out something. You're a spectator. You, you want to see what's going on. This is what happened in this story. The Bible declares to us that in this story that many people had gathered in that home. It happened in verse 17 that there were there, there were teachers of the law, there were Pharisees, religious leaders, there were scribes, there were, there were all sorts, there were truck drivers, uh, there, were, there were warehouse workers, there were secretaries, there were, you know, all sorts of different walks, whatever you are a part of. They were all gathered, the Bible teaches us in verse 17. They were all sitting, they had all come, the Bible says, in, in our story, verse 17, it says they came, they, 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 they came from Galilee, they, uh, they came from Judea, they, they, they came from uh, Jerusalem. And in our terms, they, they came from El Monte, they came from West Covina, they came from Covina, they came from Azusa, they came from La Puente, they, they came from all around the city. Ontario, all right, raise the Lord. They came. But the bottom line is, folks, many of them that were there came as spectators. They came to observe. They came to what we use in our terms. I'm just here to check it out. Be careful when you just want to check out something regarding God. Sometimes you'll never leave. It's happened to a lot of us. I came to check it out, and all of a sudden... You know, old mad dog gets saved or somebody gets touched or somebody gets delivered. And, you know, and wow, that's strange. This person giving their heart to God. Those are things that happen in group meetings. That's why we as a fellowship, Ball and Park, regarding Ball, Ball and Park Fellowship, we believe still in the home Bible studies. But I believe also the enemy attacks the Bible studies. Because strange things can happen just like this story. So if you ever have a beef, well, what, what about these Bibles? Well, let's take you here to, to Luke chapter 5, where Jesus is gathered in a home. He's not in the synagogue. He's not in church, a church building like us. He's at, a, he's at somebody's house. 
The Bible declares that all these folks were sitting by. They were not sitting at the feet of Jesus. They were there to maybe criticize, and they did. It's proven in the Word of God. But the reality today, folks, is that we need to realize that wherever there's a gathering of men and women of God, there's an opportunity for the divine power, the divine power of God to manifest and to touch as he does here in church. It's a wonderful thing to understand when you, when you go home and, you know, you have a house filled with born-again believers, people that have given their heart to God. You know, there, there, there's an opportunity for the divine power of God to move in that house of yours that's why we we believe in 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 trying to to bring born again people in the church i'm at the home and get them saved because the only thing that hinders the great move of god is sin and i'll show you that in just a moment and so here in the word the bible declares in verse 26 i believe it said we have seen some very strange things in this house. And I know I go back to my salvation, my day of knowing God for the first time. It was very strange in the atmosphere that I was amongst when I got born again. I saw some strange things. I never heard anybody speak in tongues. I never heard people interpreting the tongues and man I thought it was very strange but yet I came out of that place born again you know and so we look at this story there was a a report going forward that's why we love testimonies we love to hear that you know maybe you brought somebody to church and they got born again or, you know, God is moving at Praise Chapel over here on this little street called Ramona Park Way. So many people get lost trying to find us. They're, they're, they're on Ramona and they just need to go one street, you know. But here in the Word, folks, the Word was out. The, the, there's no doubt if you... Quickly look with, in chapter 4, just turn to your left there if you're using a Bible. And in chapter 4, in verse 30, 36, the, the Bible teaches us here the Word of God. It says, and, and, and they were all amazed, and, and they spoke amongst themselves, saying, what a word this is. You know, Jesus was preaching, and, and they were saying, what a word this is, for the authority is upon him. He has the power to, to, to command unclean spirits to come out of them. And then verse 37 says, and the report about him went out to every place, every surrounding region. And, and it goes on because... The Bible declares, now there, 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 there he arose from the synagogue, and, and, he, and then he went to another house. This time he went to, to uh, Simon, or we know him as Peter. He went to, to Peter's house. Uh, he found out that, that, that Peter's, you know, uh, mother-in-law, his mother's, whether his wife's mother was sick, and so the Bible teaches us that, that Jesus was asked by Peter to go to, to his house to go visit his mother-in-law. He loved his mother-in-law, thank God, you know. And, and it goes here, it says, verse 38. Now he arose, Jesus arose, left the synagogue, entered into Simon's house, but Simon's wife's mother, that's his mother-in-law, she was sick with, with a high fever and, and, and they had made a request regarding her. So Jesus stood over her. 
he rebuked the fever and then he left and the fever left her and immediately she rose up and she began to serve him in other words folks how many of you know you want to get somebody saved go pray for them and get them healed and they'll serve god most likely you know not a guarantee but I know if I'm dying of cancer, if I'm dying of a liver disease, I'm dying of diabetes, I'm dying of whatever, and somebody comes along and prays for me, and I get healed, man, I'm going to go thank that God. Not them, but God. And so the Bible declares that immediately, folks, she went and she started serving God. And then verse 40, and when the sun was setting, all those who were sick with various diseases they they brought them to jesus and 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 laid laid and he laid his hands on every one of them and they were healed amen man when you got it going folks you want to you, you you ever have ministry at home and, and 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 somebody gets touched by god the word goes out and you can build many people coming to that Bible study. That's because the word is out. That's what makes a church powerful. When the word is out, you know, this person got healed. This person got delivered. This person got saved. And, and they go back home, folks, and they begin to testify. People will come. As soon as Peter's mother-in-law was 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 touched by this fever that was going to eventually take her out all of a sudden the people the word got around peter's mother-in-law got healed and, and and that man that peter is walking around with which was jesus all of a sudden they bring many people said here verse 40 anyone who was sick with various diseases they were brought to him jesus laid his hands upon them, and they were they were healed. Verse 41 teaches us also that even, even as he goes on, that demons were cast out by the laying of the hands. Verse 41 teaches us there in the Bible. Those are tormenting spirits. Those are spirits that torment people, torment you where you can't sleep, torment you where, where you just can't be happy, torment you where you just want to just to be a life filled with discouragement. And it says that he rebuked those spirits also. And they came out of many, friends. And so now we see why. See, I said, now we see from chapter 4, we're reading out of chapter 5, our main text, why when, when the people from, from Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem and on and on when they heard that Jesus now it came into this house they flocked there and the story goes on about these these men that these four men that realized man our partner our friend our relative he can get healed if we take him to where Jesus is at that's why you, you need to understand, whenever you invite somebody to church, and, you, and you're born again, folks, you're believing that that person's going to be touched by God. It may, not, it may not be a healing, it may be salvation. I know I, I get blessed when I meet somebody that you bring, and, 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 and later on that service, maybe they give their heart to God, or maybe they've been touched by God, where they start coming back I, I get blessed by that well in the story of Luke chapter 5 this was a this was already this this came to be because of what had happened days weeks maybe months before where Jesus was already healing people now he makes his way you know to this house over here and word gets around remember the testimonies that God did God did through this man Jesus the Messiah now he's he's at so and so's house and they flooded the house because God was moving 
So these four men in the story, they were encouraged by this. And they knew about the power of God. That's why you invite people. That's why you that, that are witnessing to people, what you're really saying is, I know what God did in me, and he can do it to you. God delivered me from, what is, what's that smoke they just, meth? God delivered me from meth. They didn't have meth in my days. The only thing was heroin. You know, but meth, you know, and, 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 and you know, and, and, and they, they, they delivered me. You know, you know, I got healed from this. I got, I got touched by, and, and somebody knew you from the past. Well, they're going to want to see this interesting, strange thing also. These four men, the Bible declares to us that, getting back to our story, that they go and pick up this man. I, it, it was hard work, folks. You've got to remember, they didn't have, you know, they, they didn't have bus. They didn't have a bus. They didn't have a car. What is that, Ubi? What is that, that, that Uber, Uber? I never rode, I never rode on one yet, but Uber, what I call it, Ubi? Yeah, oh, 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 wow. Uh, you guys, you, you modern, you day people, man. You're walking around with the Uber, Uber Groover, you know. But uh, anyway, they didn't have all that. They didn't have none of that, folks. Where you can dial, what do they call it, dial ride, you know. And, you know, I see some of you come in taxis, man. <laughs> you go, Whoa, look at that, man. They didn't have all that, you know. I mean, man, that's good stuff. You know, you're getting chauffeured to church. Man, these four men, folks, the Bible declares to us that they went looking for this guy. Verse 18, and behold, a man was brought on a bed or a stretcher by these men, these four men that carried him. This man was paralyzed. Paralyzed means a man, he's not, he, he can't function on his own. And it can mean many things. You know, many times this is where we invite people because, man, they're not functioning right. They're not doing things normally. And this was the, this was the situation here in the story of this man. In verse 18 of our story, a man on a bed who was paralyzed. And these men sought to bring him in. I mean, the church was overflowing. The house, it was a house. The house was overflowing. They couldn't get this guy through the hallway. They couldn't get him in. There was nothing they, they could do, folks. But what they had, and I pray that we as a congregation have this type of faith, a faith that will not be reject it, a faith that will not quit, a faith that will say, I tried to no avail, but a faith that will say, man, one way or another, I'm going to get touched by God. That's a faith. That's a faith that doesn't, you know, quit so easy. Sometimes we quit too fast when we should be, man, you know, that's why God is so so impressed because because he he tells he tells this he tell he tells them he says I, I I see the faith in you and and so these guys man what they what they do they they just they just don't walk away and say sorry pal we, we're going to take you back to the to the corner and drop you by again and leave you there no folks they did something crazy I mean you know the story they. They, they just weren't going to be spectators and, and, and give up. No, folks, the, the Bible declares to us when they could not, look at verse 19, when they could not find a way to get in. Verse 19 is saying this in the story. Because of the crowd, they, the Bible says, then they went to the housetop, the housetop of the, of the house, and they broke through their way through the ceiling and let them let him down before Jesus. I mean, man, they, they had to, you know, 
It'd be like somebody trying to break their way to get, get here to the altar. Man, they have to know exactly where to break through. That Man, these guys, I mean, first of all, that was some risky thing because they had to break down somebody's roof. Yeah. And so they did. There was no gaps in the, in the, in the, in the, in the roof. They tore the roof up and said, all right, we'll teach those, those people that don't want to let us in. We're going to get in. And the Bible declares to us, they begin to tear the ceiling, the tile, the tile that was there, and they began to, to rip it off. And they, they could not find, verse 19, they could not find their way to bring the man in because of the crowd, so they went up to the house stop and broke through and they let the man down with his bed down before Jesus. That's faith. That's faith, folks. That's, a, you know, our, our theme of our conference in just a couple of months is breakthrough anointing breakthrough breakthrough that's it's going to come down pretty soon that banner and the other banner will be you walk in there it's going to say breakthrough anointing i wonder what you're going to do amen as far as having your breakthrough what is, what is it going to what is it going to require for you to get your breakthrough folks this story they 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 tear down or they make a a hole in the roof now they had to make it you know they had to make it at least at least what six feet i mean normal man's height is what you know five feet on up and so you add another foot if not unless you're you're like jesse or dono i don't know you know there's another foot there you got to add but so maybe they you know i don't know i don't know how tall this dude was you know this man i'm sorry then you got the stretcher. So you add that up, Jess, what is about eight feet, maybe. You know, I mean, you got a stretcher, because you gotta have handles to, you know, to carry this guy. Maybe eight feet. So you're you're tearing up a roof of eight feet long to to make your point. To make your point. And we're not gonna leave till this man has an opportunity to be put before Jesus. I'm not going to leave. You don't quit, folks. You don't quit. And then, in a powerful statement, in, 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 in verse 20, and, and when Jesus, the Bible says, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said, and this is why we use that word man. He said, man, he said, oh man, your faith has made you well. Verse 20, your faith has made you well, folks. You know, you think about that. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, here in the, in the word of God, he said, he said, your sins are forgiven. I love that. First thing, remember, God always deals with with sin first. He, he said, first of all, you know, you're going to be forgiven of your sins, and then, and then we can do more for you. That's why we have, we believe in altar calls. We believe, one, one person once told me, we don't, we don't do altar calls because we'll offend the people. Well, man, I'd rather offend the people than send them to hell, you know. So he said here, your sins are forgiven. And then there were there, there were the spectators. Don't ever become a spectator, church. A spectator will view everything and, and try to reason in his mind why this person and that person is being blessed, why this person is you know, rising up and you're still sitting down in the same chair and, you know, you begin to reason. You begin to reason in your, in your, in your, in your heart. In verse 21, they were there, the Pharisees. These are the religious leaders. 
They were saying, who, who, who's this man that, that, spe that speaks blasphemies? You know, who, who, who is this? The only one that can, that can forgive sins is God. But they fail to realize, folks, as we as a Bible teaching church, we believe in the Trinity. We believe that the Trinity is three in one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, these three are accounted as one in heaven. Always remember that, church. When you, when you, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, oh, I don't like the way they speak that mumble-jumble stuff. Be careful. Be very careful what you say. You know, because the, the Spirit of God is, is a part of the Trinity. It's the Trinity of God. And that's one of the... Have you taught that one yet, uh, Angel? The Trinity of the Holy Spirit? or No, you haven't taught the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, okay. That, okay. So we need to... That's why we have the new foundation classes that, that, that we do. We offer that to teach you that, folks. That you, you need to realize that, you know, it, it's the, 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 the Trinity. But anyway, here in the story, folks, we, 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 we read that these people begin to reason in their hearts. Don't ever become a spectator, a criticizer of the Word of God. You know, the religious people, you know, you, you know that religious people can be taught. They're, they're what we refer to as know-it-alls. They, they walk, in, well, I speak Hebrew and I speak Latin and I speak mumble jumble whatever you know whatever you know, that's all right man i mean whatever you speak that you know but let's get down to it you know the reality folks i don't have no problem if you speak latin i don't need to speak it when i go to the stores or anything or 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 greek or, or, or greek or you know and i mean i understand the value in that that you you're able to interpret a word you know more deeper and that's fine if you want to do that in your study time that's beautiful i have no problems against that but don't down me because I can't speak Hebrew or I can't speak Greek, uh, Greek or Latin. But these people began to reason in their hearts. And Jesus, how many of you know, Jesus knows everything we think about. You know, even, even when God spoke to Jeremiah the prophet the Bible declares that 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 he spoke to Jeremiah in in, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 he says for I am the Lord and I search the heart and I know all your thoughts he knows all our thoughts every thought that we have well God and Jesus we know that Jesus is 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 God in the flesh we know God is God. We know Jesus is God in the flesh. God cannot uh, empty himself from heaven and just come down. He, he said, he, Jesus represents him as, as, as God on earth. Uh, I'll praise God. Anyway, so, so we, 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 we realize just like Jesus is God, we, we, we read where, 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 uh, Jesus could understand, he perceived, the Bible says he perceived that these men were reasoning in their heart. So he, he, he's, he's looking at the heart of man. Even Job, Job said in Job 42 verse 2, he said, For I know that God can do everything and that no thought, that he said, that no thought can be withholded from God. Every thought, folks, every, how can I speak this, every motive, why we do things, what we want to use this for, God knows our thoughts. He knows everything. That's what, that's what Job was saying in Job 42. He goes, I know that whatever God does, everything, he knows that, that there's no thought, brother, that cannot be withholding or avoided that he doesn't know folks so this morning we need to realize he knows everything and every thought that's why he spoke this to them he, he confronted them 
And he tells them, why, why are you reasoning in your heart? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, rise up and walk? God will always deal with our heart first. Always, folks. That's why when the man came down, the first thing that Jesus dealt with was his forgiving of his sins. Number one. Number one. And so he tells these men here in the story. He said, he goes, he said that you will know, verse 24, that the Son of Man has the power here on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise up and take it to your house. That's why we encourage you, man, when you have an encounter with God in church, Bible study, man, take it back home. Let him know, man, I got touched. I got touched by God, man. That's, that's, that's the key thing today, folks. I feel that that's where we're at as a congregation. God wants to use your testimony. God wants to use your life as a reflection of what God is doing in the house of God, whether it is here or, by, or a home and Bible study. You know, uh, I, I, I today have, we have a, a shortage of houses that are being used in Bible study. It's really changed from the time that we used to have Bible study. When we had Bible study, I kid you not, people fought over having Bible study at their house. They wanted Bible study at their house. Man, I want Bible study at my house. You already had it at, at brother's house over here. You already had it at sister's house. What about my house? Now, I don't know. I can't have them, them rug rats in my house, man. They're, they're going to break my china. And, you know, oh, they're going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to, you know, spoil my beautiful rug, and, you know, oh, they're going to, you know, uh, yeah. how times have changed, folks. Oh, how times have changed. But that's what happens. The Spirit of the Lord, as in this story, took place. God began to move in just a, a, a powerful way that goes on. The man, verse 25, immediately he rose up on his feet. He took whatever he had been lying on. Some of your translations say a mat. Some say a bed. Some say a stretcher. Whatever, whatever your translation says. It says whatever he had been lying on. And then he departed from that house to his house, glorifying God. And everyone that saw him was amazed, and because of that, they began to glorify God, saying, and I'm using this translation, saying, we have seen a strange thing happen today, folks. That strange thing means when sometimes it's unexplainable. I mean, you, you just can't explain. You just, you know, how, how God will take a person that's been, you know, with no education and a person that's been strung out on, 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 on whatever they're bound on and all of a sudden they have an encounter with God and, and all of a sudden something peculiar, peculiar happens or strange and all of a sudden, folks, they become tremendous men and women of God such, I believe, happens in every church. And I believe, folks, that during the next month as we're preparing for the conference is that these needs to be the focuses of our messages dealing with breakthrough anointing. That God wants to break through and as that scripture, or not the scripture, the statement that we have in the banner and in the flyers, something got to break. Question is, what's got to break in your life? What are you willing 
to do to have that breakthrough? What are you willing to risk at all costs? It doesn't tell us who they gave the bill to to fix the roof. Nowadays, they just sue you. You know, everybody wants to sue each other, you know. I got a good lawyer. I got a good lawyer. Well, I slipped. Oh, I got a good lawyer, man. You know, yeah. You know. Can somebody say amen? amen? Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I love how it, how it ends, folks, here in that story. We have seen strange things today. Hallelujah. That's the wonderful thing about God, folks. You've you got to be ready for the unexpected. You've got to be ready, man. You know, you just, you just never know, folks, what can happen in going to a home Bible study or going to church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads in reverence to the Lord this morning. Give me a couple of minutes here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I spoke about a great faith that took place here in this story. But you know the greatest faith that we can ever exercise before God is to come to him in faith and say, Lord, I want to receive you. That's the greatest faith that we could ever exercise, folks. To come to Jesus. This is what they were doing. You know, when you read this story, it's telling us about a guy, a man that was paralyzed or crippled, and he could not make his own way to church or the house. It was a house. Make his way to that house. So, friends, according to the word of God, when Jesus met this man or when this man came from the ceiling, and was let down by these four men on a stretcher. Jesus first dealt with one, one thing first, the sin in his life. He said, man, your sin is forgiven. Number one. Then Jesus can now begin to do and perform the miracle in his life. Because by the time that man would leave that house, he was healed. He was healed. And so we, we always address the fact that the first thing we have to deal with as humans or God's creation is to check our heart, folks. Number one, maybe you're in this place and say, well, I've never been touched by God, never been healed by God. Never had a great miracle by God. Could it be? Could it be that maybe there's something in your heart that's hindering you? Could it be, folks? I'm just saying. Salvation is the first thing that God will always deal with you and me with, our heart. And that's proven here in the Word. When that man came down, Jesus said, Let's deal with your sin first. Now we can do greater things. This morning, as we're here gathered, I want to take this opportunity to invite anyone here to the, to the altar that maybe you have come and you would like to come this morning and just simply surrender it all to God. Maybe you have come and you have never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, friends, we need to realize that it's not by works. You can do whatever you want as far as work-wise, religious things. It's not by how righteous you feel. Well, this person, he's, he's always been in drugs. I never touch drugs. Yeah, the Bible teaches us, though, that all fall short. All fall short. Maybe you're here and you have never received Jesus Christ as your 
personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you have come this morning and there was once a, a time in your life that you used to walk with Christ and that was beautiful. But through the circumstances of life, maybe you went through a horrible relationship. Maybe you, you fell back to some of the old lifestyle and you you quit serving God the way you once did. Not that you never you ever forgot God, but you know in your heart, I know what I one, once was and what I need to recapture. Maybe you're here and you would like to come this morning and rededicate your heart. That's in other words, asking God back into your heart, man. Now then God can begin to do greater things in your life. I would love to see everyone in this room being healed and delivered. And, you know, there are times that, you know, we have to question ourselves. God, do I need to let it go? Yes. I know he dealt with me many times where I needed a breakthrough and I had to see my heart. God, I got to forgive that person. I got to stop dwelling and allowing myself to get angry and hate towards this person. I got to let it go, folks. You got to let it go. That's what happens many times in life. You hold on. I can tell you stories after stories where people have come and said, man, I haven't let this person go, and it's been already 10 years. Man, I just can't let them go. And God is saying, let them go. Let them go. Let her go. We are talking about, friends, a move of God, a breakthrough that we need in our lives. Some of you need to humble yourself. Humble yourself before God. Stop trying to pretend I'm right and everybody else is wrong. Man, buddy, woman, smell the coffee. Smell the coffee. This morning, I want to take this opportunity to just pray with you. I can't save you, of course, but I can pray with you. I'm not here to hear your 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 situation i'm just here to let you know by faith we can pray and if you're here and you have never received jesus as your personal lord and savior i want to i want i want you to repeat a prayer that that is in the bible or maybe you're here and you would like to rededicate and that's that's one that we need to come to grips with folks maybe you're not getting that same that same victory as you did at once maybe you're 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 struggling at times well god wants to let you know he's the God of breakthrough. He's the God of spiritual breakthrough. But you have to be honest before God. Remember, I, I, I talked to you that scripture in Jeremiah 17, God searches the heart of man and knows all our thoughts. He knows everything. He knows what you're thinking about right now. Right now, at this moment, he already knows what you're thinking about. But when you're honest with God, folks, God, man, God can turn around your life so quickly, so quickly. This morning as our heads are bowed, maybe you have come and say, you know what, Pastor, can you pray with me? I, 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 need, I just need that prayer right now. I need to give my heart or rededicate my life back to God. If that's you, I want you to do one simple thing first. Lift up your hand. Lift it up. Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? Lift it up. Anybody here? I want to make sure that we... We're very clear. We have a, help me out here, ushers. Amen. Okay, God bless you. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? You're here. I just, I'm not trying to put anybody in a spot. God bless you. You can put it down. I'm not here to put anybody in a spot. Man, I, you know, the Bible says all heaven rejoices at someone to say, yes, I need Jesus. We probably, most of us in this room have done that. But I have to make sure because when we pray, folks, I have the confidence to pray for him. I say, man, praise God. You have just opened the window of heaven to touch your life like never before. It could be something loneliness. It could be a hurt that you're trying to get over. You know, God's going to give you the strength. Anybody else right now, before I change this order of the service, I want to make sure. I want to make sure, friends. Hallelujah. All right. These hands that went up, these, these hands, would you come? Would you come? 
This hand, come, would you come? Just come, just come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. Just stand here. Praise the Lord. And we're gonna, we're gonna pray. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And of course, this prayer is not to me. I'm not God. I'm just a spokesman for the Lord, as you are also. But He's given us the right to pray and lead others in a prayer. So I want you to say this prayer. Remember, say this prayer. Jesus, I stand before you. And I know you know me. You know my heart. You know my thoughts. You know everything about me. But today, I come to you, Jesus, and I ask for forgiveness of all my sins. Your word declares that you died for us on a cross and that you shed your blood for the cleansing of our heart, our sins. I receive this in Jesus' name. And Lord, I now invite you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I pray for strength. I pray for victory. I pray for faith that I can trust you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Come on, come on. Come on. Father, I pray, I lay my hand upon these two wonderful women of God. I call them women of God because according to your word, all, all the old things of life, have gone now and all becomes new. I pray that you strengthen them. I pray that this morning as they heard this word, that God, they will be used by you to speak to others and to let them know of the new found love that they have for, for you, Lord. Touch them, protect them, protect them, God. Place your hands on them. I pray that, God, you would wipe away the past, the, the hurts, the devastation of the past upon this woman here. And I pray by the blood of Jesus that, God, you would just touch her right now. I pray for this young lady here, God. Oh, Jesus, just, Lord, continue to feed her. Let her get into the Word of God. Let her learn to pray more and more before you. And, God, I pray that... God, you will begin to do greater things upon her life, upon her home, upon her family. In Jesus' name, amen. What is your name? Tiffany. Tiffany. Tiffany? Amber. Amber. That's right, Amber. I did meet you. They're going to have you fill out a card real quick. Just go with, them, uh, with Anna right there. Let's stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, folks, this story dealt with great faith in the, in, in the Word of God, folks. I mean, there's no doubt that Jesus, when he saw this action taking place, he was moved by the faith that he saw in their life. Maybe you're here right now and you want to stand in faith for a situation. Maybe it's your home. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe on and on. It could be many things. We're going to worship the Lord with the last song this morning. But you want to just come and step out in faith. Amen. Just right now. Maybe for your loved one. Maybe for somebody right now. You just want to come. Just come. Just come, folks, as we... We worship God once again. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes, God. Oh. Jesus, I 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come to the altar. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The precious blood. The blood of Jesus. to the altar, come to the altar, to the arms of our precious Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you right now, God wants to embrace you spiritually. He sees the loneliness. He sees the hurt. He sees the, oh, just the pain. When you came to the altar, it was like coming unto the arms of Jesus. That, oh, that embracing the love, the love of God upon your life. That's what you're, God is showing me right now that he's embracing some of you. He's letting you know you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in agony. You don't have to live in torment. What he's looking for, like, them, like that man, when he was led down, he said, listen, your sins are forgiven. And now we can begin to do something special. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for some of you for healing in your body. Some of you for spiritual fear that's come upon you. You're, you're living a life of fear, and it's developing into other assaults in your mind, anxiety, discouragement, wanting to quit. You even hear the word, somebody, somebody the, the, the enemy's saying to you, quit, just quit. Oh. Oh, Jesus, right now, Father, each and one of these lives that are standing here, there's loneliness here. Some, some of you are dealing with loneliness, friend. And, and, and when you deal with loneliness, you begin to do things that are out of the will of God. I got a word for somebody here. I, I'll, I'll find you if I have to, but I want to tell you, because you're at that stage, you're, you're open, and you, you don't even realize that, that you're being set up. And it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray by the blood of Jesus this morning, God, that, Father, you would just lay forth your hand upon every one of these lives, cleansing them, washing them spiritually. Jesus, it's never too late, God. Oh, the devil's a liar. It's never too late. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The Bible calls him the father of lies. Remember, if you want to know his proper name, 
It's called the father of lies. He was a liar, the Bible says, from the beginning. When he, when he targeted Adam and Eve, from the very beginning, that's what it means. From the very beginning, Jesus said, the devil has been the father of lies. And he still specializes in lying to you and me. Right now, we take authority. We take authority over the blood of Jesus over this area in our lives. God, these are men. These are women of God. These are soldiers that God have a calling in their life. And the enemies try to penetrate that lie to them. But God, right now, I plead the blood of Jesus. The one thing that the enemy hates to hear, and that is victory in the blood de la sangre de Jesus Cristo, the blood of Jesus. Cover them right now, God. I come against that spirit of quitting. There's somebody here who wants to quit. Just, just quit. Maybe not so much God, but in other areas. I, I, I see you I, in the spirit. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, give them strength, God. Let them have their breakthrough, their spiritual breakthrough, God. Just like the story, these men said, we're going to break through one way or another. If they're not going to let me in, well, I'm going to make my way anyway. And I pray, God, provide an opening and a door for every one of these blessed men and women to go through and achieve and have their victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, folks, amen this morning. Yes. Yes. Here you go. She wants to hang on, guys. She got a word here. Pastor Raymond, Pastor Gloria, where are you? Yeah, our pastors, they're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I see them in their ministry, in the church. I see them with a plow in their hand. Amen. And they're not looking back. No way. That plow has to go straight, and their eyes are focused. And your plow that you're pulling on right now is going straight. And what happens? The devil tried to lay you down, mm. but because of the standards that God has put along your ear, you're standing. Amen. You're standing. You have a great standard of people here, of leaders that are praying for you and keeping you in prayer. Amen. And I believe that we should need to pray for you. You've been going and going and going and going like that little bunny. <laughs> and you've been going and you go and you town and you get yourself in a plane and transfer and you go through the weather and whatever things you go through, but still you're here. Amen. You're still here. And the Spirit of God wants us to pray for you. And I, I want to call this, your leaders and your wife to come up. And put that standard around them for strength, continued strength, Amen. for wisdom, continued sweet wisdom. And Pastor Raymond, I see you, I saw you two weeks ago enter into another realm. Enter into another realm. And in that realm, you were doing. You're getting stronger in what you're doing now. And God is giving you a word of knowledge for people. And when he gives you that word of knowledge, listen to me. You need to come up that he may pray for you so you can be delivered. Like he did and quitting, 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 quitting. God was showing you. God was showing you. But we want, I want all of us, I believe this is the Lord, because you still have October coming. Yeah. October coming, and in that month, expect the breakthroughs. Amen. Expect the breakthrough. Yes. 
Expect the breakthrough anointing leaders. And leaders, you have to be ready. Is that what I'm saying? God's saying, expect that anointing best breakthrough to happen. Pastors are waiting for it. And I believe you have been waiting for it. And you're going to get it. You're going to get it. The church is going to get it. It's going to pour in here. It's going to rain in here. So praise God. Just pray for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray over our pastors right now, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. Father, strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that they will get rest, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We put a standard around them right now, Father. Every leader here, Father God, is in agreement. We put in a standard around them, Father, in Jesus' name. They will not get laid down again <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But they will arise in Jesus' name because of the mighty blood of Jesus. We take authority over every evil work of the enemy. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper. So we cover them with the blood of Jesus. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, not only them, but their children and their grandchildren and the church, Father, we cover with the precious blood of Jesus. And Father, we expect, Father, for the breakthrough anointing to rain upon the church, Father. But first of all, Father, it will rain upon our pastors, Father. And Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Father Jesus, my Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, folks, thank you for the prayers. Have a wonderful lunch. Men, don't forget tomorrow night, men's discipleship. Praise the Lord. We'll see you men back tomorrow. God bless you. Have a wonderful lunch. Hallelujah.